Turbo Party! Hey, okay, so everything's down at the moment, but uh, we're all out here. Hello, Blue, Game Blue Games. Cheese Pizza. That is the best name ever, dude. All right, fair enough. Okay, and wh who else is here? We've got a Doc fan here. Doc from Hermit Craft Park, looks of him. Hi, dude. Yeah, he's definitely a Doc fanboy. Look at him. Uh, we've got Nick Steele's just joined us. Blockitus. Oh, thanks for the stuff earlier on, Blockitus. Cheers, dude. PewDiePie, whatever. <laughs> that dude's awesome. Look at him. PK lag. It looks like a crash test dummy or something. Brilliant. Oh, there's there's our mate, Arena. 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 Hey up peeps, it's Moobit here, and welcome back to the MC Ages server! It is episode 10! Hello, and you join us at uh, the Valhalla shop, which is uh, nice and finished, and of course, last episode, we made the ice um, road that comes to this very spot, hopefully in an effort to make some sails underneath the Viking. And here is the entrance to the shop, and that there is leads off to the ice road, of course. And they warp through, and then the first thing they're going to do, hopefully, is go down into hell itself in order to make some shops. But apparently some people have been here, because we've got a tips jar right here, as you can see. Um, you know, for anyone who enjoyed it. And if we break this... Oh, yes! Nice one, peeps! Lovely. We've got some lovely tips here. Gunpowder, egg, snow from the spawn. <laughs> lovely. Cookies. Oh, I love cookies. I eat so many cookies while I'm editing. It's crazy. Bit of dried kelp. Walker's coin. The amazing shop. Okay, shout out to Walker if you've got a if you've got a shop in the mall. I'm sure it's there. What the? I've got some diamonds. Oh, I've got some dirt. That they to be, to be fair, dirt's quite useful. But wow, we've got wow, we've got some diamonds down there. That's incredible. I just wow. That is. In fact, I'm going to eat some cookies. Yeah, oh no, I'm full. But I, I can't eat the cookies yet, but I, I will do in a bit. Before I nosh down on those cookies, we're going to head back to the um, ice-covered uh, lighthouse down here. Which, of course, is my base. Or at least it will be when it's finished. But, you know, it's uh, it's a work in progress. Um, look, going through Everwinter here. Because I'm going to build a massive um, industrial farming network in the sea behind the lighthouse here and donate some of the proceeds to the uh, community um, and for the, such a thing we've got a, a donations chest right here and of course we could they can click into there um, there is a, um, a, a there was a carpet down there but for now hopefully yes I did put a shout out saying so can have some redstone or some pistons or something like that so we've got a whole block of redstone as well that's amazing thank you whoever left that I appreciate it um, but as you can see there's a sign here to say what we'd, what we'd like um, but yeah we're gonna build what I think I'm going to call the industrial iceberg um, down behind down in the sea behind here and obviously I've been covering the um, Lighthouse with a bit more ice, and it's a work in progress because I'm no builder. It's not quite where I want it to be yet, but I think as the as the series goes on, I think we're going to keep adding to this and doing some bits. But I've got a bit of an iceberg going, ice ice core going down there, a bit of detail up there, so you know you can kind of get the idea of what we're doing. But yeah, I think it's time to start gathering some resources. And oh, in fact, before I go, I put a chicken farm in, as you can see, and hopefully, can I reach it down? Yeah, there we go. Hey, it's working a treat. Lovely. That's what we like to see. So this is just a, your standard automatic chicken farm. There, I'd do a tutorial, but there's hundreds of them on YouTube already, so you know what the crack is with that. Um, and as you can see, I've been um, smelting up some ice. I'm going to put all our, our winnings, as you were, as you will, <laughs> into the chest here, gather up some resources, and let's get on with today's project. Which, of course, I've already made a start on off-camera, and I've fallen down already. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the sort of bottom layer, if you will, of the industrial iceberg. Um, and I can even expand it further downwards, because we're about y, equals, uh, about y equals 30 at the moment. Let's walk back to the entrance to our uh, pirate ship in a bottle. But yeah, as you can see... 
the this side is going to be an industrial sugarcane farm. Um, sugarcane is one of the main sources of uh, money on this server. Um, you can sell the sugarcane, you can farm the sugarcane and then sell it back to the server. Um, and then on the right there is in the start of an industrial kelp farm that's going to be smack in the middle of the industrial iceberg. And the kelp's there for the whole community, so everyone in every winter I'll be doing deliveries and things for, so they can use it as fuel. Um, and I'll also probably sell it in a shop, It'd probably sell it in Valhalla, like really cheap. So people who need fuel can just come and buy it and have all their fuel needs sourced and you don't have to go to the never to get buckets of lava and all that stupid malarkey. But as you can see, it's a, as you've seen from me wandering around, it's uh, I'm just trying to... Uh, what can we get across here? Can we pull her up? So at the moment, I'm just putting the redstone in behind. So um, for those who don't know how these things work, you have one block um, that's got your kelp on it. Then above that, a piston. Then above that, a, an observer with a face looking at where the sugar cane would be. Then all you do is you put a block behind the pistons here and then put some redstone on top of the block and when a kelp moves in front of the observer's face it sets off the um, redstone that's on top of the block behind here which sets off the piston below it breaking the kelp and obviously leaving one kelp underneath on the block underneath and it just grows back and then you just do that just stack them up pretty simple really so even if you're a complete redstone noob really really easy to make one of these farms um and obviously those are on the server who want some help i'll come and help you set it up but as you can see they all all comes in via a water elevator into these two chests here um but at the moment i am just uh you know finishing off these layers and then we've got to dig upwards because above us is the ocean um so we're going to have i'm just planting here as you can see here's the block look and obviously you've got to have that block there because if the piston pushes it off the bottom then there's not going to be any kelp there to grow back. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Just make sure you light it up. I've got some sea lanterns in there because Everwinter has... Ow! Everwinter has a uh, an industrial uh, guardian farm. So, you know, it, it's pretty easy to come by uh, sea lanterns these days. But as you can see, it's just that. That's all it is. It's just soil... And then one block back, one block of your choice, a piston and an observer, and stack them up like that. And this is going to go right up to the sea level, I think. Probably maybe a couple of blocks above the sea level, so it's like like an ice cube floating in the water almost. Um, for now, I've just got clear glass, but I'm going to make it all out of blue glass, which would be pretty cool. But you see, I've got these two modules in here. There you go, and there, there's your, uh, that's how it works. Yeah, so pretty simple stuff. And if you wonder what these walls are here, obviously this whole area is going to be cleared out eventually. But these walls are here because I figured out there is, um, my base is inside a slime chunk. And I'm trying to figure out uh, which slime chunk it is, because then we can make a slime farm. But there you go, bump, that's it, it just grows, it grows, it pops off, boom, away you go. And then... Same on the on the above, so you've got water there. And then behind that grass block there, or soil block as it is at the moment, is water. Because obviously cane has to have water next to it. So just behind that um, soil block is water. So it's just on the back, it's just water, block, uh, redstone, water block, redstone, like that, all the way up the back. But yeah, um, bit of bit of sort of tidying up to do. Put some glass on the front here. Um, for now, we'll we'll use um, clear, but eventually this is all going to be blue. And then we've got to replicate this, going all the way up, clear out the water, and then do another cane farm facing the other way on the opposite side of where I've made the claim. And that'll be the industrial iceberg done for now. Um, and then plenty of space underneath it for putting in things like villager farms and stuff like that as the season goes on. But yeah, I think we should go into time-lapse mode and I'll be back once I've finished doing this. And in today's time-lapse talkie, I want to talk about the pressures of being a creative, uh, inverted commas, whether that be videos or paintings or, I don't know, mathematicians, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, because I was watching a video by a guy I've started following recently on YouTube called Hayden Pedersen, and a much more successful YouTuber than me these days since I deleted my main channel when I was ill. But, uh, yeah, he, he quoted something from a guy called Gary V for, on, um, Instagram. Um, if I find the links, I'll put them in the description. And he basically said, don't create document. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? You know, a documentary filmmaker? That's what I do in my day job. Uh, but no, the, it, what he meant was, don't put too much pressure on yourself getting, for example, in my, my case, a video absolutely perfect all the time. Um, because that means you'll never get started. And I am finding that, actually. Um, because of my uh, mental health issue now, um, it affects my memory and concentration, um, a bit like, I guess, Alzheimer's, if, if that helps you imagine it. And I found, compared to before I got ill and diagnosed and everything, and took the couple of years off, that these days, although the will is initially there, because I can't concentrate very well, I find the whole process quite frustrating sometimes, and, you know, I, I can't quite perform to the levels that I used to uh, before I fell ill. And at first I thought it was just a case of, you know, getting used to my new body, if you will, and uh, trying to figure out ways around it. And, and for some some parts of it, that that is the case. Um, for example, obviously Team Reflector now is now a thing. Um, I find, because I'm so used to working in teams with filmmaking, um, just having people, you know, like-minded people around me, I can learn from and they can learn from me, but also who can support me if I'm having a bad day and I, you know, bad memory day or whatever and, and can pick up the slack. Um, that's very helpful to me. But the other part is obviously making YouTube stuff for myself. And uh, yeah, I, I find I tend to procrastinate a bit. And it's mainly, I think, when you really think about it, it's because I'm scared, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm frightened that I don't want to watch it. And I'm frightened that it, I'd spend hours and hours and hours and nothing had happened with the video or whatever. And what Hayden was saying there is, who cares? <laughs> it's like... If you're doing it for, for the money, or if you're doing it for, you know, the recognition or, or, or fame or any of that stuff, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. So the whole point of being a content creative is to express yourself, and, and he's right. I've been doing a, uh, a Friday filming vlog, and I've been doing these MC Ages episodes, and rather than worrying about whether people are actually going to watch it or anything like that, I should just do it because I love to do it. I always have loved to do it. And if people watch it, yay, bonus ball. If not many people do, like, like I used to get before. I mean, I used. To, I mean, I was on 2.7 million at one point um, on the on the deleted channel. So it's like, and is I think there's like two million views on this second channel, which is now my primary channel. Um, but that's over the course of I think five or six years or something. So there's always that pressure of of trying to get up to those view figures again, and also that pressure of making everything look perfect and look look great. But it kind of links in with what another guy who I've followed since day one and, and I'm really inspired by is Pete McKinnon. You've probably heard of him by now. He's a cinematography YouTuber, um, photographer as well. And he always says, even alongside his colleague Matty Hapoya, done is better than perfect. And I like that. And alongside this knock, don't create document, that's actually a good way to think. Because who cares if someone watches it and who cares if if it's perfect because it's only perfect to you but, but the average viewer is not going to know that I, in my case i'm a cinematographer and any cinematographer worth their salt will look back on their videos that they've probably spent months on and got it perfect at the time but a year later they might look back and it'll look rubbish because you will have developed as a cinematographer as a creative your skills would have got better i mean if they haven't then you then obviously you might want to think about different career paths and things because the whole point is you get better and you learn things and you have life experiences and you apply those to to your craft and everything and and i think that's brilliant so i don't know about you guys but from now on i'm just gonna make these things not worry too much about whether people like it or like me or anything like that and just put out what i want to put out and even if it's not perfect just put it out anyway and hopefully that's going to resonate with the audiences and also hopefully more importantly to be honest it's going to resonate with me because i've put too much pressure on myself to get up to the levels i used to and those two people are right who cares <laughs> get it out move on to the next project and learn from it and i think that's yeah that, that's good life out advice no matter what happens whether you're a filmmaker or an artist or whatever in the creative world don't create, just document, and done is better than perfect.
I think that's lovely. Let me know what you, f you think about that in the comments below. And let's get back on to the MC Ages server. Okay, and we are finally done. As you can see, I've just got to put a few more plants in. But as you can see, we have got the blue glass in. We have got the sea lanterns in. We've got the water in. We've got several layers of things all the way down. If I'm just replacing these edge ones with um, some sea lanterns. And look at that view of the, uh, the ship in the bottle. That looks awesome. <laughs> Not too much to see coming down here, but because obviously it's all best viewed from the front. But uh, we've got our, the start of our kelp farm there, which we'll be working on in the next episode for the community. And all of our drops have already started um, piling in, so we can sell that back to the server to get some money to put into the economy to buy things from people, and that will help them out too. But yeah, I am really, really pleased with this thing. Um, I'm going to build the second one off camera uh, just because, uh, you know, it's more of the same. Um, next episode, we're going to be working on finishing up the kelp farm and get that farmable and building a super smelter to smelt up all that lovely kelp. But as you can see, it's working lovely. I love this thing. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, and then we've got to think about how we're going to um, put all this in. I think I might m remove this wall on the left here and make it all blue all the way down. But um, th there's big plans for this base. It's going to be huge once I've finished. Uh, let's plug up that hole just there, though. It's going to be massive when we finish. But, yeah, this for now is going to get me enough money to be able to buy the materials to make even bigger and better community farms. So that's that's the plan for the next few episodes. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse talkie there and it's inspired you. Um, in fact, I'm going to give you a view of the bottom here. And a rather impressive view it is too. <laughs> yes, I'm loving this thing already. It's going to be even better once it gets bigger. But I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, give a like and a, and a share and everything. Or if you didn't like, just press that dislike button twice. See if I care. I'm not bothered. Anyway, I'll see you next time on the MC Ages server. Ta-ra! I like to move it, move it. Bit, 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 bit.